Okay, week 10, part two. Uh, some of you might be wondering why we're having this lecture on engaging with the profession. And, and the short answer is, um, it's part of the requirements for your registration. So your program uh, has to be uh, recognised and assessed as acceptable by the Queensland College of Teachers. And part of that is about meeting, meeting all the professional standards. And so in this lecture, I'm explicitly addressing some of those professional standards and what it looks like in teaching mathematics in the primary school. Um, also, when you start teaching, these are the professional standards that you will need to uh, have your performance measured against and certainly as you go towards full registration and things like that. So here's the standards I'm going to look at today, 7.1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, the 7.1, meet professional ethics of responsibility and the importance of the five, and then I'm linking that to maths with the big five ideas. 7.2, complying with legislative, administrative and organisational requirements. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Uh, and I'll link that to the curriculum. And 7.3, engaging with parents and carers. And 7.4, engage with professional teaching networks and broader communities. So those are straight out of the professional standards uh, and things that, as you go, I'm sure you've seen them already as part of your general education course. But in this course, we're required to address them specifically. And it's important as you become a primary school teacher of mathematics. So the first one, Engage professionally with colleagues, parents, carers in the community. Uh, and again, there's a link there to a uh, YouTube clip. And these ones are, uh, I'm not sure about this one, these ones are often from ACARA. So we want to make sure you hear exactly what they're saying. So about doing this, this is important, not just because it's a principle, but you need to be a professional and thoroughly professional in what you do. There's an ethic of care, which you'll understand, which is um, more than just how you relate to children, but it's also your professional ethic and responsibility as a teacher. Your job is not just to be a babysitter, but to help the kids learn. Um, and some of the key principles that would help you do that, these come from the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, which is from the United States, but would be also this, similar to here. Um, so what does a professional teacher of mathematics, which you all will be, look like? First of all, you need to have equity. You need to have high, expect high expectations of all your learners and you need to make sure your learning is accessible and meets the needs of all the learners. Okay, and we've talked in the past about maths teaching that just charges straight down the middle and is based only on content. And this is just not professionally and ethically acceptable. You have to make sure all the learners in your class, as diverse as they will be, are receiving good quality teaching and learning. And this will be a challenge for you sometimes, but this is part of the, also uh, the fun part of teaching, meeting kids where they're at and helping them move forward. Part of your professional responsibility is also to have a, a curriculum, and I don't just mean the formal external curriculum, but the curriculum that you then take in your school and then you take into your classroom because that's the, the curriculum that the students experience. So it needs to be focused, it needs to connect to the expectations from the uh, national curriculum and your school, but it also needs to be tailored to meet the needs of the learners in your classroom. Professional teaching means to understand that students need to learn and how you can get them there. All right? Remember your job is not about teaching, your job is about learning. How can I help students learn? How can I help all the students learn what they need to do? How can I take them from where they are and move them forward? How can I ensure by the end of the year that they've learned everything they needed to so that the next year they move on, they're at the level which is going to set them up for success in the following year? Um, you have a professional responsibility around assessment, that your assessment should support learning and should provide useful information. And that relates a little bit to what we talked about last week and the, the things you watched from Dylan William around assessment for learning. And lastly, you've got a professional responsibility around technology, making sure you're up to date and up to speed with what's happening and that it's used to enhance student learning, not just as a babysitting device. Now, uh, last week we talked about Dylan William, another very famous maths educator in the world is called Joe Bowler. Uh, and I encourage you to watch this video. It's very easy and it's um, very practical. So Joe Bowler did a PhD in England about um, students learning in tough classes 
and now she's moved on to the America to Stanford University where she provides a lot of professional support for um, mathematics teaching worldwide really. So one of the things is the importance of the five big ideas in maths. So when we think about maths, we always think of oh, number, algebra, geometry, but these are the five big ideas. And we've covered these previously, and I'm pretty sure you've probably covered it in your other maths courses, but the five big ideas that go across all the parts of mathematics, all the strands and key learning areas, one is mathematical thinking, being able to reason in mathematical ways and apply understanding to solve problems. This should be characteristic of your learning, of good mathematics education, part of your ethic and responsibility as a good teacher. Are the kids developing their mathematical thinking? Are they developing their understanding of proportionality? And this is about recognising relationships and making connections across the curriculum about things being proportional to one another. It's a big mathematical idea. Uh, another big mathematical idea is patterning. Okay, so it's fairly clear that algebra is about patterning, but patterning is uh, a fundamental idea of mathematics and it's inherent in all the, across all the curriculum areas. There's patterns to how numbers are structured, there's patterns in geometry, there's patterns in algebra. So as a professional mathematics teacher, you would be ensuring that students get this big idea as they go through all the particular parts you do. The fourth one is about generality, and in the end what this means is the power of mathematics, it is generalizable. It's just not a pattern that's specific to each situation, we can also extract out patterns which are generalizable and useful in a range of situations. And the last one is about representation. One of the powers of mathematics is we can represent concepts and ideas in different ways to solve different problems. So these are considered the five big ideas in mathematics. If you just Google five big ideas in mathematics, you'll find a lot of resources and ideas about it. Part of your professional responsibility as a maths teacher. All right, the second thing you have to do is comply with legislative, administrative and organisational requirements. In the end, as a teacher, you are employed by the Australian people, by the government, but an answerable to a local school. But what this means is not just the curriculum, you also have to become a registered teacher, which means meeting professional standards, which requires you to do professional learning every uh, year. You need to do administrative tasks that are required as part of your legislative requirement. You need to teach, teach for example, keep attendance. <clears throat> um, and there's a range of other things. You need to prepare the kids, you need to help them do NAPLAN. Even if you think it's a terrible idea, you don't have a choice. You can't say, oh, I'm not doing that. There's a whole pile of responsibilities you have. <coughs> and although ACARA, the Australian Curriculum and Assessment Reporting Authority, um, has set the Australian curriculum. It's actually each state's responsibility about what happens in the classroom. Now, it just happens in Australia, at least uh, from uh, foundation to year 10, that everyone's agreed to do the Australian curriculum, and there'll be a new one coming through in the next year or two. It's already out, but they'll, they'll start rolling it out over the next wee while. You have to do this. This is part of your professional responsibility. And again, one of the key areas is the Australian curriculum, like I just said, <clears throat> the new ones come out and um, it will be rolled out uh, probably over next year, but probably fully implemented by uh, the year after. But there's the key learning areas, so when we think about the curriculum, you have to cover the key learning areas, and in our case we're interested in mathematics, but that, then there are the seven general capabilities, literacy, numeracy, etc, etc, which you all know well. You have to also cover those. And then there's the cre cross-curriculum priorities. You also have to cover those. All right, so if you just sit there and teach maths, for example, and just teach the learning um, outcomes, then you haven't taught the whole curriculum. You have a professional responsibility to do all of that. I'm sure you've heard that before. What does that mean for math education? Again, there's a video you can look at and it gives you some practical examples of what it looks like. Now, um, this is just a screenshot from um, the ACARA website. In fact, it's from that video there, if you go to it. it talks about where the curriculums come from and why it's always changing and how you can access it. Um, it's not the most thrilling video. I think it's just a talk to a PowerPoint, but it provides some information that you will need as a teacher going into school. And so I suggest you watch that video and 
these couple of insights will just help you understand about uh, the ACARA, where it comes from, the curriculum, and then the proficiencies, what they are and what it looks like, and then you need to think about what it might look like in mathematics. Now, the third one of these uh, professional standards is about engaging with parents and carers. And sometimes this can be a bit uh, scary when you first start your, your teaching career. And again, there's lots of things. There's an, uh, a YouTube trip clip to follow there, which gives, again, some practical ideas from a real school about how they do it. But if I can only say one thing about this, my advice to you is to get in contact with your parents before the kids do something wrong. Establish a relationship at a positive basis uh, rather than just waiting for the kids to do something wrong. So when you ring up, all of a sudden, it's because they've done something and you want to have a meeting because they're being naughty. All right, so try and build it on positive things first. Uh, if you get that relationship going, then it circumvents a lot of the problems you might have otherwise. Have a look at the video, it might help. Um, now, m m specifically um, with mathematics, sometimes you're going to get in problems because parents have particular views about mathematics which aren't always helpful. Uh, so. But it can circumvent things and it can make things difficult if you don't address it. So first of all, I always fairly early on send um, an activity and a note with parents. Often I'll call them for a meeting specifically about mathematics because I want them to be partners. We're gonna, if you're going to send homework home for the kids, they're going to be working with them. And the first thing they need to know is a positive attitude is the most important thing. Um, secondly, there is no maths gene. So I don't know how often I've heard from parents, oh, don't worry if Johnny can't do maths, I can't do it either. And I have to say, well, there's nothing genetic about it. There's no reason he can't do maths, and in fact, there's no reason you can't do maths. Uh, it's not a genetic thing. Um, so I would try and get them on board, try and get them working on things. The, the other thing often you'll find is parents will help kids, and it might be doing things the way they did it. So you might be helping, you might be wanting kids to think about uh, Numbers, grouping them, pulling them apart, putting them together, doing arithmetic in their head or something like that. And you'll send the task home and the parents will teach them the algorithm, which doesn't help. So you need to get them on board first. Don't just let them, um, if you don't, it, you're going to be in trouble. So help them on board. Show them why you're doing it. Help them understand the new way of understanding maths. And often they'll say, wow, that's amazing. I wish it had been like that when I was at school. Um, so yeah, being on the front foot with parents is critical, uh, particularly in mathematics. Most parents are happy to read with their kids uh, and that sort of stuff. They'll help them with their projects, they'll colour in, they'll go and buy a thousand bits and pieces so they can do a wonderful diorama or something. But when it comes to mathematics, often they're like, oh, that's, I can't do maths. So if you don't deal with that issue first, then you're going to have problems because the first thing they'll teach the kids is maths is hard, you can't do it, and don't worry, it's genetic. So be on the front foot is all I'm trying to say there. So the last one is about professional networks and broader communities. Um, when you graduate, or even before you graduate, you'll become a, a provisionally registered, then a registered teacher. So you're part of a professional community already. But there are, other there are a lot of other professional communities, some around leadership like ACEL uh, and things like that. If you're in a, an independent school, there's the Association of Independent Schools. Uh, Catholic schools have an association as well. But there's also associations around subjects. And it could be that some of you go through and think, I'd like to be a maths leader in my school. Uh, and if you do that, first of all, uh, it's a really great job to do. And also, second, secondly, it's one that often will help you because there's not always a lot of people who want to do it. Now, if that's the case, you'd want to be, belong to a professional association around mathematics teaching. And in Australia, that's called the Australian Association of Mathematics Teachers. The website's there. There are a lot of resources there you can find, um, readings and other things, but it tends to be very practical. There's also the Queensland Association of Maths Teachers, or if you're going to go into New South Wales, there's the New South Manswire, I think it's called. Maths Association of New South Wales, or whatever. I would encourage you to join into some of these groups if you can. Um, now, obviously, you can't be a member of the, well, you can, but you probably don't want to be a member of the maths one, the literacy one, the English one, the social studies one, the history one, the technology one. 
But I hope for some of you, you, you really think maths is something you can make a huge difference for kids in schools and you really want to follow it up. And in that case, you should become a member of the Australian Association of Mathematics Teachers and go to some of the, their events. They have professional learning things uh, nationally and in the state. So this is your last maths education course. Uh, there's one more lecture to come, which is just going to be a revision one for your exam. Um, are you ready to go out and develop positive creative mathematics learners? Now, I think most of you probably are ready, as you can be at this point, but the rest of you develop, we can only do so much here in the university, you can only do so much sitting here in classes and lectures or watching these things on your phone or wherever you're watching it. In the end, you're going to have to go out and do it. Um, try stuff out, you might make some mistakes, but you're ready, you're ready to make that next step. All I encourage you to do is when you go out, find your own mathematics teaching practice. Don't just repeat how you were taught when you were at school, but find what you want to do and how you want to do it. Some of the ideas here that have come through here, I hope you say, yeah, I want to be like that. I want to help students develop a sense of ownership and agency. I want to help students really love mathematics. And then develop your own consistent practice and your own philosophy about how it works. You don't write your philosophy about it and then that's it, it's finished. It'll change as you go. As you engage with kids, you'll meet different kids in different sites, you'll change. Um, you need to meet the needs of the students where you're at. But it also is not just about entertaining kids, it has to be deeply and richly mathematical. So the students come out with strong mathematical identities, rich mathematical knowledge, and able to practice mathematics in ways that uh, set them up for life. We know in this course we haven't given you the recipe for success. But we are confident that if you've really engaged with the lectures and the tutorials, talked with your tutors and really uh, had deep discussions with them, shared ideas, shared questions, then you can be a really great maths teacher. And we're looking forward to seeing what you do once you go out in the profession. So remember the exam's coming up in a couple of weeks. The exam questions will all be based on what's in the lectures. Um, Next week we'll have some revision and, um, and then good luck. All the best.